Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy LB, also known as Mr. Nelson. Back at you guys another game with some more reviews. So, I've yesterday, you know, I was off from work, so after school, you know what I'm saying, I decided to go down to the record store and buy me some more CDs. And I even got a, I even got some vinyl. Um, so I guess I just go ahead and show you guys what I got yesterday. So first CD I'm gonna show you is Scarface: The Diary, uh, released in 1994. This is Scarface's third solo album, on uh, released on Rap a Lot Records, and um, this is one of his, this is one of his greatest albums. You know, Scarface has a lot of good albums in his discography. So um, I I agree with Ken on Dead in Hip Hop when they had that episode about. Who has the best discography in hip hop? He said Scarface. Um, I, I agree with him, even though everybody else like kind of like bashed him for saying Scarface. He was right. S Scarface is an artist who got, he's one of the many MCs who has a pretty good uh, discography. Um, you really can't say that he has a bad album in his discography. Some might be weaker than others, but even the ones I recently I recently read his book. And even the ones that he didn't even like were were considered good albums, but yeah, um, yeah, this is one of Scarface's best albums. He was this album received both a five my rating and a, a double XL rate. No, not double XL because double XL wasn't even out then. Sorry, he I think he got a he got a five my rating um, from this um, from the source. And he also got a good rating. I think he also got a good rating from the Vibe magazine. I don't know if Vibe does the whole five might thing, cause I'm not really. I don't really read. Vibe. I never really read Vibe like that. But yeah, this this album had two singles: "Hand of a Hand of the Dead Body," featuring Ice Cube and Devin the Dude. Um, that was a song where Cube was like, well, not Cube, but Scarface and Cube. They were like t attacking all these people that were blaming gangsta rap for what they for their for violence you know um, in his book scarface talked about how uh people were blaming his music people were out here shooting and killing people killing cops and they were blaming his music and other rappers as influencing them to do that and that was that was his response him and ice cube responded and also i seen a man die which is one of which is one of Scarface's best songs, man. You know, it's about a guy who comes out of prison and he's trying to get his life straight, but he ends up getting caught up back in the crime life and he he, he ends up dying. I think he gets killed or something like that. But, you know, it's a very poetical song, man. Very, very touching, man. And also the song No Tears, it wasn't a single but it was in, it was featured on the film Office Space in the beginning when that one dude, the Michael Bolton character, when he's in the car rapping. I think that was a song that he was. No, that was actually seen a man die. I'm sorry. I think he was. I think that was the part where they were beating up the uh, the, the 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 copier machine or something. But yeah, it was included in, in the movie Office Space, man. So yeah, this is Scarface the Diary. Uh, you know, I highly recommend it, man. Um, if if you don't have any Scarface album in your discography, you, uh, start with this one. Great, great record, man. Alright, so next I got the Beastie Boys, Paul's Boutique, released in 1989. This is their second album, and their first for Capitol Records. Yeah, so, uh, you know, after License to Ill, you know, Beastie Boys, they started having problems with Def Jam. They ended up leaving the label, moved to Los Angeles, signed with uh, Capitol Records. And, you know, while their first album was commercially and critically successful, a lot of people wrote them off as a one-hit wonder, and they labeled their type, of, their style of hip-hop as frat hip-hop because, you know, their lyrics and sub their subject matter was very immature, you know what I'm saying? All they really talked about was partying and just a lot of up obscene things, even though I still consider that album a classic, but they took a different direction. They hooked up with this production duo or team um, these DJs known as the Dust Brothers, who, um, their their production style was heavily sample based, and a, a lot of the music that was used on this album was originally supposed to be used for a, a Dust Brothers instrumental album, but the Beastie Boys, they decided to take a lot of that music and rap over it. So this, yeah, this was a 
a totally new direction for the Beastie Boys. This is the album where people really started taking the Beastie Boys more serious. And under you know, they they realized that these guys were these guys were for real. They weren't just some one hit wonder, immature guys that just rapped about partying and drinking. They were actually serious artists. And this is the 20th anniversary edition that came out six years ago. Um, this is the only edition I think that's available right now. But I, this is definitely a good album, man. I see why so many people consider this one of the Beastie's best albums. I've enjoyed it since I bought it yesterday, man. Um, the music is good. Digitally remastered. Um, the bass the bass of my car, man, it, it really knocks with this album. So, you know, if you, hey, any hip-hop head should have this in their discography in my opinion man so go ahead if you come across Paul's Boutique man hey don't hesitate to, to purchase it man it's a good album you won't be disappointed okay next I have uh, the new Scarface album uh, Deeply Rooted <laughs> Deeply Rooted this is Scarface's new album came out about two weeks ago yeah man like I'm gonna tell you right now if this album isn't Included on the best of albums of 2015 list or any list then people are really sleeping and people are hating because this has got to be one of the best albums to come out this year man Scarface Like I said man face always delivers man. He always drops quality projects man Even the projects that he says himself he didn't enjoy making or feel were all that good man, but this album right here I mean, he he said in countless interviews that this is his this is the best album he's made ever. That it's a complete body of work. You know, what I'm saying I think it's been my five or six years in the making, but definitely a good album, man, from start to finish, man. I, and this is I got this from Best Buy. Get the Best Buy, get the Best Buy version, because the Best Buy version comes with um, three um, bonus tracks that are equally as good. So yeah, Scarface. Deeply rooted. Go ahead and check this out. This is his first album on a in the on his own independent label. So he's doing all of this himself. This is this has nothing to do with rap a lot or anything, man. He's doing all this himself. So go ahead and cop that. Also, I got Dr. Dre's new album, Compton, a soundtrack a soundtrack by Dr. Dre. This is supposed to be his final album, and you know this album came out right around the same time that the Straight Outta Compton movie came out. Um. Solid project. Do I do I think it's Dr. Dre's best record? No. I, I don't think it's nowhere near as good as what we heard on The Chronic or on 2001. But it's it's a solid project, man. It's a solid project. I'm not gonna say it's terrible. Um, when I first bought the CD and listened to it, I didn't like it. I was on the verge of taking it back to Best Buy the next day, but something told me just to, you know just go ahead and listen to it again, man sit back and listen to it again and once i did i was like okay yeah this, this project isn't that bad it's pretty it's pretty solid um one thing i like to i like to point out is that dre i really liked his delivery on this album like he used it he was like doing a little bit of double time on this a little bit but i just liked his flow he came with a whole different type of flow on this album that i never heard dr dre do so a big shout out to him for that um the features king mez uh, Justice, um, Anderson Pack, Marsha Ambrosius, The Game, all these people came through. Snoop Dogg, let me tell you, Snoop only had made two appearances on this album, but let me tell you, Snoop kicked some of the hardest verses that I have ever heard from him in a long time. Like, that's the type of Snoop I like to hear, man. He kicked some, he kicked some hard verses, man. And it's been a long time since I heard Snoop rap that way. So, I hope I hope Snoop comes out with another rap album, man. That he 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 goes in for that style, man. Cause I've never heard Snoop kick it that hard. And, he, and his his delivery, he came with he came with a new delivery too. Cause you know Snoop is known for his laid back, charismatic style, but this time he kind of was like more a little bit more aggressive with it and more you know open with it, man. I like I enjoyed that, man. So yeah, Compton, solid album, man. It's not bad at all, man. Um, go ahead and copy. I mean, I'm sure this album is going to be available for a while, man. I mean, it's Dr. Dre. So, if you come across this, go ahead and copy. All right, the last CD I want to show you uh, is P.O.D., The Awakening. This is their latest album that was released uh, not too long ago, sometime last month. 
But um, honestly, man, I'm not. I need, I'm. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to this album and maybe give you a, a more of an individual review on this record. Not really feeling it that much, man. Um, it's supposed to be a concept album where it follows this young guy. I guess he's just out there in the world, just like living a reckless life. You know, I think he's he's like sleeping with a married woman. He's partying, doing drugs. I mean, it's a good concept, but I felt that the band didn't really flesh it out enough. And then there's a lot of sound bites that are also included on this album that really have nothing to do with the concept. I just feel like the concept was a bit rushed. It wasn't fleshed out enough. Musically, the, the album is great. Um, Sonny, I enjoyed his singing on this album more than his rapping. His rapping was a bit subpar to me on this record, man. Um. So, considering what they did on the last album, Murder Love, yeah, I think this album was a step backwards. Murder Love is the is the shit though. Now I listen, I listen, I can listen to Murder Love all day, gun day. That that album is dope. But this album, I think they took like a bit of a step backwards, man. But I'm gonna have to go back and listen to it, re-listen to it, and see if I find more gems. But I I can tell you right now that the title track, uh, Am I Awake? Well, it's not the title track, but Am I awake? That's one song that I did enjoy. I liked the chorus part. But yeah, it's not one of their best, man. I, that's one thing about P.O.D. They'll come out with a good album, and then the next album will be a step below. They're, they're always like up and down with their discography, man. But still enjoy the band. And I have two vinyls I want to show you. All right. Right here, I have Prince, Sign of the Times. Uh, released in 1987 this was a double album this was this was after uh the parade album this was after prince had broken up the revolution and everything like that he went back to his old format being the the main producer songwriter composer arranger you know the famous produced arranged composed and performed by prince you know all about that yeah i, I found this at this um this record store i go to called hippo cat they had it there for twelve dollars, so I went around and bought it. Ben had it on CD, had it on CD for years, for for probably like probably like fifteen years. I've had it on CD. You know, I have the CD right here. Well, this this I actually I actually bought the CD again because the one I had it was a bit in bad shape. But this is the CD right right here. Ben had that. But yeah, I just got it on vinyl, man. This is one of Prince's best records. Um, a lot of people consider one of his like a masterpiece, man. Double set album, you know. Uh, include, you know, the song "Sign of the Times," "Housequake," it. What else? But it's best known for the songs like um, "Hot Thing," um, "You Got the Look," "If I Was Your Girlfriend." That was a huge hit. What else? "I Can Never Take the Place of Your Man," um, "The Cross," which is a very inspirational spiritual song. And Adore, Adore, which is one of Prince's greatest love ballads, man. And um, it also has a song here called It's Gonna Be a Beautiful Night, which features the revolution. It's a live performance of the revolution that they did in Paris before they broke up. Probably around like 1986 when they were on tour, on the, on the parade tour, I guess. But um, yeah, double album, man. $12, man. Really enjoyed it. And another vinyl I have is Flying Lotus, You're Dead. I got this on vinyl too yesterday. Um, I have the CD somewhere. Uh, here it is. Got the CD right here. I, I got the CD back when the, when, the, when this actually first came out. But yeah, I went away and got this on vinyl too, man. Yeah, I, I, I recently bought a record player. So I've been trying to rack up on vinyl. I got some vinyl coming like later like I, I think i have a bad brains vinyl coming saturday and i have a talib Kweli and dj high tech the fr the first reflection eternal album train of thought that's supposed to be coming to me on vinyl sometime next week i ordered it off of amazon i, I would have got those albums at the record store that i went to but it was just too daggum high man like talib Kweli stuff was like almost 35 dollars you know what i'm saying i just went ahead and bought this Cause it was like $29.99 so you know with tax that's like equals up to 30 something dollars but yeah this is your dead flying lotus this is his latest album 
Um, we all know who Flying Lotus is, very experimental hip hop producer, musician. Uh, he does like a lot of electronic music, EDM, wonky, experimental hip hop. Here's the gatefold and everything like that. You know, uh, yeah, he's he's a really talented guy, man. He, um, for those of you who may not be familiar with him, he's the he's the he's the house DJ for uh, Hannibal Buress's new show on Comedy Central. He's the DJ on the show. That's Flying Lotus. But yeah, this is his most recent album. Came out last year. Um, he received a uh, widespread acclaim for this album, man. And this this album was actually my first time really getting into Flying Lotus's work. It was just something about the album cover that really just stuck out to me. And I just had to buy it, man. So I went ahead and got it on vinyl, man. So, yeah, Flying Lotus, you're dead, man. Warp Records. Dope album, man. So, um, that's all I have for today. Um, I got some more stuff that I can review, but I'll I'll probably get to I'll probably get to that later on sometime to the next week, maybe if I let us see it, whatever, man. But um I'm glad to be back doing these reviews. Um, so I hope you guys are excited that I'm back. But until then, as always, love, peace, and music, and everybody out there be blessed. Peace out.